Hello guys, what is up? It's Mace. Welcome back to Blazing Glazed and welcome to just like a fun and frisky and you know, a fabulous as shit Q&A moment. I am so excited for today's video because honestly, I haven't made a video that's just like sitting down and talking with you guys and letting you guys get to know me outside of like the fashion and thrifting realm in a very long ass time. I asked on my Instagram at Macy Lenny for you guys to send me questions for a Q&A video and I also asked you guys over in my community tab. So get in your comfies. I have on this just a fabulous Ragdoll LA. They're like a sustainable brand here in LA. Little like Cheetalicious matching set on. This is honestly so fabulous. I've been stuck in it constantly over the past like three days since I got it in the mail. So we're loving it. Grab a little espresso, grab a little drink. I actually thrifted this that says like spoiled rotten while I was back home in Ohio in the summer. I just felt like it gave like immense wedding singer 80s energy, which you guys know is honestly my favorite energy to give. The first question I'm gonna answer, which was probably like the most asked question is when was the first time that I went thrifting and like when slash why did I start thrifting and just like all about my thrifting journey in general because like obviously over the past couple of years thrifting has become so big it's become something that so many more people are interested in and getting involved in and I think that's literally amazing I live in LA now but I actually grew up in Ohio raised by a single mom and first of all Ohio thrifting is just the tits ass it's everything it's fabulous we love it um, but I really really like fell in love in love with thrifting and like expressing myself through fashion and thrifting when I was in high school I'd say when I was about 16 years old I started hitting up my local Salvation Army every single Wednesday and at that point I just had my walls plastered in my basement bedroom in my mom's house with just all the pages that I found like really inspiring from my Teen Vogue and my nylon magazines and that is what I would go to the thrift store and try to recreate I grew up you know, with a lot of mental health struggles. I've had depression and anxiety my whole life. And I also was growing up in kind of a like toxic environment when I was younger. And I was just dealing with a lot of shit. I was a really sad kid. And the thrift store was a place that I could go and be me and shut the rest of the world out and just focus on fashion, focus on the clothes, focus on just like recreating all these outfits that I loved and expressing myself. And it became such a huge part of my life when I was 16 and now I'm 29 years old, which is one of the questions is how old I am. I turned 29 back in September and honestly, I've never felt more young and fresh and fabulous. So any of you guys that are like nervous about getting older in your 20s, literally don't be because I had none of my life figured out even just a couple of years ago. And now I am literally chasing my dreams every single day. And that comes with a lot of time and a lot of healing and a lot of believing in yourself and advocating for yourself and getting down with your fabulous ass self. So yeah, thrifting has always been a part of my life. And obviously over the past like two years, especially since I started my TikTok, which is blazing glazed as well, it's been an even bigger part of my life. I always loved fashion and you know, I went to college at Ohio University for fashion merchandising, but I always knew I didn't necessarily necessarily want to use that degree. I've always been in love with entertaining and making people smile and making people laugh. And for me, fashion and thrifting is kind of my vessel to story tell. So to me, my platforms are so much more than thrifting, so much more than fashion. I want you guys, my goal is for you guys to come for the fashion and stay for so much more. Along with like entertaining and making you guys laugh and feel seen and heard was also to bring thrifting into like the high fashion conversation. So getting people more comfortable with rewearing things and secondhand fashion and exploring thrift stores and exploring estate sales and exploring all of these amazing magical pieces of clothing that already exist out in the world and getting to see over the past year specifically um, thrifting and my voice featured in publications like Nylon and CR Fashion Book and Stylecaster and the LA Times and Fashion Magazine, like all of these publications that I grew up really standing to the absolute max. Like I said, Nylon was plastered all over my walls. So when they did a feature on me last December and secondhand shopping, it was such a dream come true. Um, like I said, to kind of bring thrifting into the high fashion and like more fashion industry conversation because I did fashion internships back when I was younger and I just didn't feel like there was a place for me in fashion. And when I created Glazed and Glazed, I did it to have a place for people that love fashion on the internet and love storytelling to be able to come together and you know, feel like you don't have to look like me, dress like me to be cool. I want you to just be you and be inspired and be here to party. That's why I love when you guys comment telling me, you know, like I don't get her style at all. It's not my style at all, but you know, she makes me feel more comfortable to be myself. Like that's my goal guys, that's my goal. So that is my whole thrifting spiel. I think the other question I saw about 
thrifting was what is the best thing that's happened to me through thrifting and obviously it's this obviously it's getting to make all of my dreams come true and meet all of you guys and just create this community of people that love and really appreciate secondhand shopping that appreciate celebrating fashion for more than just getting a new garment um and wanting to look like everyone else people that want to celebrate clothes that have lived such fabulous lives and go out there and like do their own thing in it and i just think that's amazing especially because Growing up, I just never felt empowered through thrifting. You know, I got made fun of for having to do it in high school and it wasn't something that people necessarily like felt was really cool back then. So if I can make anyone growing up the way that I did um, with the same experiences that I had feel like really cool about thrifting and feel like it's a superpower they have, I feel like I have done my job. So yes, you guys are the best thing that have come to me through thrifting. How big is your closet and how do you go about managing it? This again, one of the number one comments I get is just like, she has too much shit. Where does she put all of it? How does she wear all of it? And it's like, okay, first of all, I did get also asked, if I have time to wear all the clothes I thrift. I think people sometimes forget that I'm definitely not advocating for people to thrift as much as I do. Being like a content creator and a fashion creator, influencer in a sense is a huge part of my job. But for me, if you think about it compared to other influencers and other peers of mine, they're constantly being sent PR from brands and all of these different companies. And I don't do that, you know. For me to accept PR from a brand, it has to be a really special brand that is sustainable, that is ethical, that is, you know, a small business Business, something like that like it has to be special to me and it has to make sense to me I get all of the clothing that I style on TikTok and on Instagram and here on YouTube from thrifting so if I'm not thrifting I don't really have new pieces to kind of show you guys and Personally, I since I have been thrifting my whole life have always preferred to have a closet that rotates I feel like this is the lighting is terrible. Is that better? No, that's so dark. Oh my god I just realized I don't have the light on in here Oh my god, maybe that's why it was so dark, Macy. Okay, I feel like that's better. Is that better? Yes, yes. Anyway, I yeah, I like to thoughtfully donate my clothing. That's something I truly advocate for so much. Um, I'm not someone who gets super connected to a ton of my items. Some items, don't get me wrong, stay in my wardrobe forever. Some like insane vintage pieces or thrift finds that I know I will wear for the rest of time. But yeah, thoughtfully donating. Don't just drop stuff off at like your local Goodwill or Savers. Really look into like different nonprofits and shelters in your area and see who can use good quality clothing because obviously these you know, people in women's shelters or people that are experiencing homelessness in your area, they deserve to have like new, cute, amazing clothing too. So definitely look into those options when it comes to donating. But yeah, I definitely do get like wear out of my clothes. I'm constantly styling outfits, constantly like posting outfits, constantly wearing different outfits. I'm someone, comment if you can relate, that literally wears five different outfits a day. So don't worry, the clothes get wear but it's a part of my job. It's a huge part of my job um, until I get to the next phase of my career to have to create all of my content on my own and supply everything for myself to do that with. So going out and introducing you guys to new thrift stores and stuff like that is, you know, just part of it. Do you have a day job outside of YouTube? And I felt like this kind of went along with what we were just about to touch on. And I don't have a day job outside of YouTube. YouTube and TikTok and content creating and being a digital personality and entertainer is my job. I have a team that I work with and you guys that have been following me for a long time know that my main goals are to, you know, create television shows and star in those television shows and host different projects. And I'm working on some unscripted shows that I've created and selling those with my team this year so that's a huge part of what I'm working on right now and then obviously if you guys just follow me on YouTube I do have a TikTok which is where I have like the bulk of my following and yeah that's what I do for work I am so so blessed to be able to kind of be creating my dream life it's something that the internet has given us that is so amazing the internet has given us this opportunity to be able to reach things we would have never been able to reach you know I grew up in Ohio like I said and I sat there every day just wanting more for myself and wanting to be in the entertainment industry but coming you know from a place where I didn't have any connections to it all and for me right now fashion and thrifting and sharing the message of secondhand shopping and my love for it um, that also goes hand in hand with my love for people and connection and storytelling and mental health to me those things go very hand in hand and that is the bulk like I said of what I'm working on this year so so much to come very excited very excited. How do you stay so positive and energetic? Is it natural? How did this come to you? How are you so positive all the time? Literally one of the biggest questions I always get asked and guys, 
let me just let you in on a secret. I am literally not a naturally positive person. It is a practice for me every single day. You guys that have been following me for a while, a long time, know that I grew up very, very glass half empty. I, like I touched on earlier in the video, have had depression and anxiety since I was like five or six years old. And all throughout middle school and high school and going through my eating disorder and all of these things, um, they made me a really sad and mad and upset person on the inside. And over the past five years that I've lived in LA, I've really had to go on this huge transformation with myself, which really kicked off with me committing to eating disorder recovery. Like four or five years ago for the first time, um, and really committing to that and that took me out down this whole rabbit hole of you know getting comfortable with my body and food and myself and learning who I was again figuring myself out advocating for myself liking myself and loving myself it's a huge process um and this like sparkly ass person that you see before you is who I am it's who I was when I was four or five years old it's who I was when I was like dancing around wanting to be you know an entertainer when I was younger and I had to refine that person I had to like reignite my sparkle again because I had let other people dim it my dad for example I have a really like not good relationship with him at all I have boundaries up with him right now where we don't speak and that was very hard for me to do but it was also something that gave me the permission to start healing myself for real um, taking a step back and realizing that other people's actions toward me my whole life didn't have to dictate if I was happy for the rest of my life. I truly cannot tell you enough how much I used to look at positive, sparkly, happy people and be like, okay, cringe, cool for you and not for me. Like I literally used to be the haters that comment on my shorts and my TikToks hating on me um, for being so fantastical and spastic and astic. And I used to be like, yeah, cool for you, not for me. Oh my God, I've been through too much trauma. Like I've been through too much and I'm not like invalidating anyone's trauma, especially not my own at all. It's all very very valid and those feelings are valid But at the same time I really realized that I could not let other people's actions and words dictate how I lived my life How I treated myself how I spoke to myself I mean I woke up every single day guys for like the first 25 years of my life with the first words coming out of my mouth being mean things about myself and if you really sit down and think about what are the first words you say to yourself every morning in the mirror or just out loud or in your head if they're mean things, like you need to cut that out. You need to cut that shit out right now because there are enough people doing enough shitty things in this world. We need to be able to give ourselves empathy, the same empathy we give other people. We need to be able to give ourselves compassion, the same compassion we give other people. Start saying kind words to yourself. This is my number one tip for just dipping your toe into a positivity journey. Don't say the mean shit out loud. Say the nice stuff, gratitude journal. Gratitude booty journaling has been such a huge thing that has helped me in this positivity journey and helped me kind of take little steps because it can be really overwhelming, especially when you're someone like me who was so negative and dealing with a lot of trauma. It can be really hard to not get bogged down by it. And when I think back to like Macy before I moved to LA who had like just gotten done with college, I was like, 24 years old, I remember vividly like a couple of weeks before I moved to LA sitting on the floor of my mom's house against a door, literally screaming and crying at the world like why, 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 why? Like why does this all happen to me? Why do all these shitty things happen to me? Why have I been through all of this? Why is my life not moving in the right direction? But at the same time, I wasn't speaking kindly to myself. I wasn't treating myself like I wanted to be treated by the rest of the world. It, it was just, those things go very much so hand in hand. And I had to realize that my life was never gonna start moving in the direction that I wanted it to if I didn't start treating myself with kindness and respect and believing that I deserve those things and being confident, being confident in this person I am that I am so obsessed with. And it doesn't start with being obsessed with yourself. It starts with not saying the mean shit. If you're not a naturally positive person and people being positive and happy rubs you the wrong way, I, I think that's an internal thing and you need to look inside and you need to journal and you need to talk with yourself and you need to sit down and kind of think about why that rubbed you the wrong way because for me it was honestly always coming from a bit of envy. I was envious of people who were like that and I also thought that people that were so positive, oh they must have never been through any trauma, anything, like nothing like me and that's not true. I'm literally living proof to tell you that's not true. Everyone's dealing with their shit. Your shit's valid, but everyone's dealing with their shit and there is no reason to bring yourself down in the process of dealing with that shit. So I don't know if that was helpful, but I hope you guys know that I'm never spewing toxic positivity at you. I think you should absolutely feel your feels, but I'm here to make you smile and laugh and that is what brings me pure joy. 
It's the stuff that I need to do to keep myself feeling good. Oh my God, okay, we have to end this on how did Tyler and I meet? You guys, so many of you guys asked me that question. And if you don't know, Tyler is my partner, my boyfriend that I live with here in LA. So I will give you guys the short version, but he'll have to come on and talk with you guys about it sometime because he's the best. We all know Tyler's the best. Now we were at a frat party, he was 18, I was 19. We're now 28 and 29, so yeah, it's been 10 years. And I was getting so heavily creeped on by this older dude. Like I was like disgusted, like, oh my ah! I heard my story. Oh my God, you scared the shit out of me. The bejeebers? Do you want to tell them the story of how we met real quick? Because like, I need a break from talking. I thought you were in a meeting. I wasn't, no, I'm not. Okay, tell them how we met. So, when we were little bitty baby freshmen, I remember being a very shy and timid little boy. And, um, Sure, a lot of you will understand like when you go to class sometimes you're on a certain schedule and there's certain people that are going to different classes and you cross paths like on a consistent basis. Like that one person you always see when like you're walking yeah. to algebra or something. Mm -hmm. My case was chemistry 101. I would go and this way. The class. Yep, and then you would go to Morton Hall walking this way. I think it was on Tuesdays and Thursdays and we would cross paths. It was uh, the fall quarter of her freshman year. And I just thought she was the prettiest thing. She was always walking around smiling and laughing and just seemed like a whole ball of fun. And I just, in my head, would build it up every morning. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach her today. And then I'd get nervous because I'd see her friends there and be like, I can't. can't. <laughs> then it was winter quarter and I joined a fraternity. I had just set the scene when you barged in of um, January at a frat party. I was feeling a little bit more confident and then saw this one at said frat party. And I just told myself, all right, this is it just grow up just go talk to her like you're a man just go do this so i walked across um the party and said hi um i'm tyler you don't know me i just have seen you around campus and have always thought you're really pretty and wanted to introduce myself and now we're here yeah but like the backstory is that at that he didn't know that i'd been getting creeped on literally all night by this like older like creepy guy who wasn't in his, his fraternity and so i literally like told my friend that i was with like i'm gonna hang out with this guy all night because he's literally wearing like cargo shorts and a lanyard and like a backpack and looks like a freshman like he looks so he looks so harmless to me that i was like yeah I'll let this guy like hang out with me all night and like protect me i was like i think i said like if you pretend to be like my man's like we can talk so that works. and then we realized and like found out that we were actually from like a home like the same hometown basically and had grown up like 10 minutes away from each other our whole life and never met each other mm -hmm. and she was friends with my step brother and his yeah family. it was like a whole thing after college we packed up our car and we drove into LA together and we've been living here for like five years and I'm so happy and I love him and he's my best friend and this is getting a little too mushy gushy for my heart to handle <laughs> Because I'm a hard ass bitch. So you like to think. And Tyler made me a little bit softer. Soft. He did make me a little softer, guys. When we met, I was like, I don't like to cuddle. I don't like people. Get away from me. I think I did see a question that was like, what has your relationship with Tyler taught you about long-term love? And that really stuck with me because I didn't grow up with my parents being together and neither did Tyler. And it was really important for both of us to be in a relationship that was healthy and that was that felt good and that was different than the ones that we'd seen displayed for us when we were younger and you know growing up i never saw myself being in a relationship like this i didn't think that was for me he is like now i don't want to say this too loud because he'll hear me but he's literally my angel that i'm pretty sure the universe sent me um we balance each other out so so much and i'm just so grateful for him it's really all about acceptance and honesty and communication. Communication is the biggest thing we've had to work on over the past 10 years and it's caught in us everywhere. We also have like a big rule of that we can't yell at each other um, or cuss at each other or say really nasty things to each other because that's something we both grew up kind of hearing and that's something we don't want to bring into our house and to bring into our you know kids in the future's lives. We just want to create like a life and family for ourselves that we never had growing up and I love that we're both on the same page about that and I love that we both have such a mutual respect for one another and who we are as people and we really accept each other for exactly who we are so 
Ugh, I feel like I could literally talk to you guys all damn day about all this stuff, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you have any more questions, if you guys want to see another Q&A, if you guys want more vlog videos, just what you guys want to see. I want to give you more than fashion over here on Blazed and Glazed Lake YouTube channel. So do not forget that you're a beautiful ass queen no matter what, doing your thing just the way you do. Truly nobody does it like you, and I will see you guys back here next week. Peace! Peace, love, and chemise. You're amazing. I'm amazing. Say something kind to yourself and have a good day. Bye. <laughs>